Right then, piston rings. So, what we're going to do is, is I'm going to show you how to um, disassemble piston rings and so on. Let me just move the, the viewfinder for the, what is it? Right, so I've got you in nice and close and we've got sunlight, which is quite nice, so we can see what's going on. Um, so the first thing we need to do with this is that there's obviously a gap. These are the different piston rings, the circlet ones, there are tang ones, which is about like this, but they have a little tang sticking out. With the tang ones, pliers are the best thing. You get some really thin, nice pliers, so something like uh, these. These have got like a little protective tip on them. You can see them. You can just get in there and grab them, stuff like that. What I generally tend to use for these ones is a small tipped little Phillips screwdriver, if you can see that. Um, and basically, try and push around the clip like that. So now what we've got is we've got the opening for this clip right there, if you can see this, right in there. Let's see if I can get you a better angle. That's better, we can kind of see a bit better there. There we go, we can we feck in Nora. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. If I'm going to do this once, we might as well get a really good shot. Um, so, with any luck, you'll be able to see the gap that's at the bottom. Oh, it's fucking filled with oil now. Where's that can of air? Let's just blow some of it out. There we go, a bit of fluff. So, you can see at the bottom there near the tank. Now don't put this tank over the hole. The other thing is you'll see that the rod is a floating rod. So this is a fully floating rod. A lot of V8 engines, sometimes they have, they have semi-floating rods. So the rod, the uh, wrist pin, gudgeon pin, is either forced into the piston or it's forced into the rod. Usually it's forced into the rod because it's steel. Um, so it's press fit into the rods and the piston is floating, but you can have both ways. These are fully floating rods, hence why we need this clip. You can see there, hopefully, that it's moving backwards and forwards. What we want to do is we want to push the piston towards the camera, so towards yourself like that, so that this wrist pin isn't resting against the clip. Then with our Phillips screwdriver tip, you basically pop that in there like that, and then just peel out. Now it should go ping everywhere if you're very very careful about it. Now what you do is get your finger in there just to stop it from pinging. It's a bit difficult me trying to do this without the camera like that. So you can see we're basically out now and if you notice there's no there's no horrible scratching noises there's no nothing. Then with our snipe nose job is we basically now just turn in so we're kind of turning it See, I'm turning it like that, and it should just pop out and job done. So there's your clip, nothing's fired out to the other side of the room. Now, with the way these things are, oh, bloody hell, fire, come on. Oh, I'm pushing the wrong way, you idiot. I'm trying to look at the camera and fucking do whatever. So now what I do is, is that you get your finger, whichever finger fits, and you push it in. You should be able to just push the pin out like so. Give everything a twist like that and then we're free and then lay the rod down with the piston and job done pistons out there's our wrist pin you see some score um, spalling on there so on and so forth put them to one side and then basically you just leave that just floating around like so and there's loads of shit that's probably what i tipped in there from that previous video <laughs> but um it's basically that simple you know you don't have to writhe on these things Depends what pist state your piston's in. Obviously, if something's gone wrong. Can we see the other one behind it yet? So clean all that out. I'm just doing that so you can see. Uh, here's the second piston. Same thing, we haven't got much of that clip there. But all we're doing is just levering like that. Yeah, nothing over strenuous, over not stressing anything. It's not over strenuous. There we go, just like that. Same thing again. Now, it would be better if these pistons were at TDC kind of thing, but then you don't, this is a two up, two down, so you're always gonna have a bit of a problem either way. You can rotate your crank to get a better purchase on things. This piston's going to be a dick. I can't get my finger in. 
Ah, oh, God, it's like going to the... What do the Americans call it? The prom. Now, rule number one, do not grab this like this with anything. Do not stick any bloody... Fuck, I've seen all sorts. Do not stick, you know, anything on there. You can knock them out, you know, if you get a, a socket that will fit in there, just make sure it, it is the right size. But obviously you've got to be careful because your pin's on the other side. Come on, you fucker. Bloody Nora. I've got light. I've got a light in my face. <laughs> Thank you know. People say, oh, you're fucking shit at doing this. It's like, dude, try and do it and record at the same time. It is not fucking funny. And now I've got my bloody finger stuck in there. That's what she said. Just a little push, a little wiggle. Lift up and catch the rod so it doesn't start clowtering around. Keep your wrist pins with your pistons. What I generally do, if you can see this, is I lay... Focus, you feck. There, I lay the rod, in uh, the wrist pin, inside the piston like that. And then she's all good. Fuck it, we'll go for gold. If we're still in shot, we are still in shot. Where the fucking hell is that? Right, so you push the piston back. Uh, push the piston towards you so the pin goes back. The hell is the clip in that one? Oh god, we're bloody miles away. Fucking, where's that gone? Is it right next to it? What? Just give it a leave and see what pops out. There, oh, she's right there. I see you, you old fucking bastard. Finger over it so you don't fire something in your face. There we go, clips out. You see, there's no massive noises, bangs, whatever. You don't need to keep your ring clips, your snap rings, you don't need to keep them with each individual piston because you're going to bin them. <laughs> you are going to bin them. And one that, once they've been in an engine for this long and stressed out like they have done, fuck, I can't get in because of the bloody light. Let me stick my finger in there. Oh, she's lubed. That's it. Now I've got my finger stuck in the rod. There we go. Lightly drop that rod down. Take the wrist pin out. Place it in the bottom of the piston. And can we see the last one? We can, but she's not in focus. And now she is. Awesome. So this one should be fucking piss easy. It can go. I'll tell you what, I'll do it the other way. It's going to be more difficult for me because this is against the wall. But who doesn't like a challenge? There we go. There we go. Ring comes out. And all I'm doing is sticking my finger in there like so. Lifting this up, grabbing the rod with my fingers underneath and placing that down. Jobs are good then. So I've laid these in order. And you'll see that in a second. These, I took out this one first and went along. So as the engine numbering goes. As the engine, num engine, engine, engine. As the engine numbering goes, that was number one, that was number two, two, three, three, four, and four. Hey, jobs are good. Right, let's clean these. I just want to clean these off. The reason why you number things is not just so that they go to... It is imperative that if you're going to just slip them back in, they need to go in their respective holes. But one other reason is, especially even if you're going to do like an FA or something like that, is that if you um, drop these, you know, the, or the, the box gets knocked over and they all roll out or something horrific, um, you know which ones were which. And that's happened to me before where I didn't do this. Not just with stuff like this, with other things in the past. We're engineering based stuff. Um, 
The reason why I use this a Phillips head is because it has a rounded tip. It has a rounded tip and it tends not to scratch. God, that one's fucking got some real galling on that one. Again, you know, don't chuck these things in and crash them together. This is what I mean about patience and, um, well, just patience and just treat them with a bit of, you know, be a bit delicate. It's not the fact that you'll break stuff. It's not the fact that if you drop a wrist pin in one of these pistons, it'll fucking explode or anything. It's the fact that you could be making evidence, like fabricating evidence, um, by dropping things into pistons and making scratches and then you spend fucking forever more looking for the reason why. Where did that scratch come from? It's because you dropped it. Um, so now we've done that, we can then, you know, take these apart and have a look. Um, so, master of zoom. There we go. And then let me make an area where I know that you'll be in focus because I'm fucking terrible for doing this. So, um, there, that's the, that's the daddy in it, that's the spot. Piston skirts have scores on them, just as you'd expect. You can see that there, that's nothing untoward, that's nothing nasty. The uh, dark coloration on here that you might see on pistons and stuff, that's just burnt oil. That's like, this gets hot, it gets thin, and it just basically burns there. It's just the deposits, basically. It's the waxes, it's the um, just oil residue and bits of carbon and stuff. Again, scraping on this side skirt, exactly what I'd expect. Um, and this is why you measure, so when you get a micrometer, and we're going to do that soon, when you measure these things, you measure there at the side skirt, and the reason why you do is because other places just don't receive wear, so you aim for the place that has the most wear, if you are trying to measure the wear. Um, it is pointless measuring things, um, you know, just say if these sections here, right there at the top of the crown, just around about here, if that never wears, and it usually never does, it hardly touches anything. If that nearly ever touches anything, you could measure there and go, wow, that's well in spec. Chuck it back in, <laughs> and you haven't solved any of your issues. So when you go to measure things, that's what you need to think about. You need to think about, one, what is this telling you? Number two is, is there a better measurement that will tell you, um, you know, what's going on? Because at the end of the day, that's all we care about. The numbers are just for comparison and you know the arbitrary in a sense if i just said 26.364 to you you'd be like versus what as in that, that is that good you know what i mean um so you know that's why we measure there across the skirt there because of piston slap because this is where the pivotal point is like this you could measure across the top but like i say unless you have the original spec or what it's what the tolerance is in and out of that and the tolerance in this respect is what it can and can't take. It's just like it comes off a production line. When something comes off a production line, um, they measure it and say, well, can we tolerate it being that much oversized or undersized or so on? But to be quite honest, this is, um, getting back to it, this piston is uh, <laughs> completely fine. People always say stuff like, oh, what's all that shit on the bottom? This is the piston, this is the underside of the piston crown. So that's basically one of the hottest regions. And you can see that it's the hottest region because the rest of it's pretty much okay. But right in there, um, you know, she's all charcoal and cooked. That is normal. As oil drips off and as the piston goes to bottom dead center and as all this oil flings off because of its um, inertia and the momentum that it's gained, uh, this goes really thin, and if it's really thin, then it cooks. And, you know, that's completely normal. These holes here on the side are oil drain back holes for... Uh, well, it's actually a bit of both. It's a bit of feed and drain back for the wrist pins. Um, what else have we got? We'll have holes... Yeah, we've got holes in the ring bands. We'll see them in a second. These cutouts here, if you don't know, these are release for the valves. And we'll go into clearance engines and stuff like that. Uh, this arrow here indicates the exhaust, but if this is gone, obliterated, wasn't even there in the first place, sometimes they use the um, dot hammering, or it's dot engraving. Sometimes it's just gone, you know, it was so weak or the tool's fucked or something. Your intake ports are bigger than your exhaust port, so we know that this is the intake side and this is the exhaust side. Carbon build-up like this is perfectly fine. You know, there are engines out there running right... Your engine right now might look something like this, hopefully, if it's in good nick. Um, 
Apart from that, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. Inside the ring balls, I'll see if I can get a good, there you can see, look. You can see right in the bottom here, inside the, the wrist pin ball, and on the other side at the back here, you can see that there's um, some wear there, which you'd kind of expect when we look at the wrist pins and see what state they're in. So I'll put that to one side a second and let's have a look at this. Nearly rub well, that's how light I'm rubbing. I'm not even rubbing off a bloody paint pen. So this wrist pin uh, has galling in the centre. So there's two things you can learn from these straight off the bat. These bits here, these outer regions here, the ends, they sit in the piston. This sits in the um, conrod. And these two bands here you can see that are clean. Uh, in a sense, almost the original material. And you can see that there's galling. How well can you see that actually? Oh yeah, you can see, you can see there's galling in there. And that's actually galling from the conrod. And when I look at the conrods, we'll see them at a later date, you can see that that's where the wear has happened. And it's, it, it, it's obvious because the aluminium is gonna give up the ghost from the piston. So this steel should be pretty good where this is, you know, steel on steel. And these rods are, not fed up the rod so these are internally um, fed oil systems these are literally just it's just splash basically and splash lubrication means that it's not pressure fed it's not directly fed so if you had an oil passage like journals on your bearings or camshaft and stuff that is a direct oiling system where if there's just something like this where there's just holes in it and then there's these grooves in the side along the sides there that's just to aid any oil that's splashing around and squirters and stuff getting in there. These don't have squirters. I don't think I can't see them. Weirdly enough, they've been the, the block has been cast to have them by the look of it, possibly. Yeah, yes it has. But they are not installed. Which means that there was the intention to do that, but they haven't done that. We'll look at that later when we look at the block. Um, but that's quite an interesting element is the fact that they're not fitted and they were it has been um, included into the design but regardless um yeah you know so this is this this is all normal now what we're going to do now um let's just quickly flick through the other ones what i want to do is i'm going to quickly flick through in front of you and see if we can find anything that is abnormal uh, general scratching, yeah, that's about right, about the same. Same thing there, what you'd expect. The top, the crowns look fine, same-ish kind of carbon. There is a asymmetry to them slightly, but you'd kind of expect that. One cylinder is going to always be worse than the other one. You're always going to have the worst one. There's actually some chatter marks on the inside of there, and the ring boy, you can see some chatter marks where the rod has the wrist pin has moved ever so slightly because even though the end is there there's actually a chamfer on the end of these um, pins so they kind of sit a bit further in actually looks like they're probably tooling marks because they're all the way out here at the boards as well that's fucking quick fucking machining is that's not very nice actually um, but you can get what I'm saying is you can get little chatter marks sometimes if the the wrist pin is um, a bit of a sloppy fit and it rotates like this it'll make little indentations it's like brunel in um ish but uh everything else looks normal and fine the wrist in itself that's more and more bothered about same kind of galling on there same kind of thing exactly in the ring uh, in the band where the conrod sits this is piston three so this is towards the right hand side same kind of look focus you fucking dickhead where are we we're there 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 there, there, there we go uh, same kind of um, scuffing on this side same kind of scuffing bit tiny bit heavier tiny bit heavier uh, burn marks on the underside. Looks like it's getting a slight bit hotter. This region is larger. And the wrist pin bores. 
Yeah, similar kind of wear, stuff like that. What you'd expect. However, I did notice when I was taking them apart that this is, well, they seem to be getting worse where we get further and further to the right. So you can see the galling on there. It's actually gone right. It's starting to go through the hardened material and starting to gall really badly. It's actually to one side as well. So I think what's happening here, let's see if I can get a good photo of that as well. I think what's happening here is the um, end play. The end floor on the crankshaft has shifted um, over time and it's just started to slightly bend the rod. Not bend, bend it, but the the, um, the forces applied to it are asymmetrical. Let's have that versus number one. And I'll basically point out which one's which. That's number one. Oh, fucking hell, I shouldn't have dropped that in there. Well, these are done anyway, but yes. <laughs> Ideally, you shouldn't drop them. Uh, piston number four. Uh, where's my little bit of, just to get the... Same kind of thing, nothing major. You know, compared to some of the pistons we've seen, like some of the detonating Ducati ones and stuff like that, these are completely fine. This seems a bit more wet. A bit more carbon on there, but like I said, there's always going to be one that's the worst, and there's always going to be one that's the best. What you're looking for is massive asymmetry. So these are different ends of the engine, you know, and the difference between the two, eh, you know, this has got more oil in it, maybe this is leaking a bit more, you know, maybe this is hotter, this is cooler somehow, but you know, the, the difference is not that much. You'd expect kind of like a night and day difference. Like, oh my God, that one's black and that one's basically fucking silver. Um, yeah, the skirts, everything looks fine. Everything looks fine. But if we look at this uh, wrist pin, this seems to be the worst. Uh, you can see there, real start spalling going on where it's basically just rubbing around and grinding over time just this is a long process though we get a picture of that one um, but you can see the differences as we move from one way to the other so as we move from bank one to bank four bank four seems to be suffering ever so slightly and so does number three but anyway at any road, any red, there, there, there. Fucking <laughs> Nora. Right, so the next thing I want to do is show you piston ring removal because fucking you know, hell, I see some people do some fucking stupid shit. Whoops. There is no reason on God's green earth why you ever need to use a screwdriver on piston rings. So stop fucking doing it. I see people jamming screwdrivers to piston ring grooves all the fucking time on these YouTube videos stuff like that people need to stop doing that Jesus Christ so if your ring is stuck do not get me wrong if your ring is absolutely stuck then yes you know you well to be quite honest, it doesn't matter the pistons binned if you've got a piston ring that is stuck in a piston bin it it's as simple as that right because if it's you know that piston ring will be worn and now it's stuck, so you're never going to get a new ring in there because the new ring is going to be th fatter. Um, so, removing piston rings is uh, something that's really simple. It's not rocket science. So, push the ring. We're going to use the top compression ring. You push the ring. You can buy pliers and all sorts. Fucking don't need that rubbish. So, this is a, a point where I'm saying there's ways you can do things and there's ways you can't. So, you can buy piston ring installers, piston ring whatever, don't need it, absolutely fucking don't need it. So what you do is, you find where the ring gap is, so the ring gap is here at the top, let's just master of zoom it, master of zoom, find where the ring gap is at the top, you can see it there, that's where the ring gap is there, push right next to it there, so the rest of the ring bows out, then all you do is at, uh, just say we're at 6 o'clock here, just before like 11 o'clock, you then push the ring. So in a sense, what we're doing is with, I'm a tiny bit zoomed in there. 
what we're doing is, is we're pushing the top ring and we're pushing the rest of the ring like this. And what you'll see is that the top ring there just bores out. You can just see that the whole thing just bores out like that. Then all you do is grab your finger like that and then you would need to pull the ring up. And what you're trying to do is pull the ring out of the groove, pull it away from the wall and just let it glide up and then let go. I right, don't twang it, but we basically just push it up like that and then like that and it shouldn't scratch the side of the wall. You should hear nothing. So put it back in. There, like that, that was my finger. Now we've got this like this, all you do is just push this. You push it like that while you hold your finger here. So you just push it back over the top, trying to basically recreate the ring, don't stretch it. And then once you've got it like that, you can basically just grab it and just rotate it. Just rotate it like that, give it a quick pull, and then that's it, it's off, that's it. There's nothing to it, absolutely nothing to it. It's that simple. Just cleaning this, cleaning my ring. You after, there might be ladies watching. Um, but that's it, right? There's no twanging, there's no whatever. I didn't need a screwdriver. Like I say, if you've got piston rings stuck in a piston, then screwdriver away because that piston is fucked. But you have to be on, on the understanding that you are not going to use that piston or rings again. Um, these rings have got nothing written on them. Not that I can see right this second. Not even a mark. But I think these are square profile rings. Yeah, these are square profile rings. I think they've got a slight bevel on them. So that's the compression ring. We'll put that up there like that. Uh, next thing, exactly the same thing again. So just to repeat, um, push there right at the bottom near the ring opening just to the left hand side of it you can obviously do the reverse left-handed push there about 11 to 10 11 o'clock grab your finger and just go up and then just let go it'll just sit there and then basically all you do is just try and close the ring back up this one's a bit more difficult like that so you'll start to see let me get a good there we go so i'm still holding this ring at where i started at six o'clock and i'm just pushing around pushing around and then once we're there, where the ring is now relaxed and it's just left, you just rotate the ring like that. It'll snag on some of these bits, you just give it a... It's just all one finger stuff, right? And then you just lift it out like that and nothing. Didn't make a noise, didn't scratch the shit out of anything. No scratches on the piston, no nothing. This has a... And this has got a bevel, a slanted bevel on the side at the back of the ring. Any road, we'll look at rings in a minute. Um, oil control rings, same kind of thing. These are really easy because they're really light, but just to you know do the video on, just up like that, and then just move it around with your fingers, and then it just falls off. Um, the actual spacer, if I can find the fucking end. Where's the end? <laughs> oh, we've got a never-ending one. Um, but any road, take your next ring off, same kind of thing, just roll it around and she should just come out like that. The bloody hell's my spacer gone? Oh, there we are. You give it, you give it a quick push and a turn and you'll, you'll snag the end. Or if you squeeze it, if you squeeze the ring together, usually it'll pop in half. These things, you don't have to be too delicate with these are flimsy spacers like that. These just basically hold oil, retain oil between them. And then job done, that's it. Um, your top and bottom ring you know generally i think that second compression ring is thinner with my calibrated grip could not yeah it feels a bit thicker um but obviously like i said these rings are junk i'd never put these rings back in because they're probably too worn i'm actually going to get some new rings and then we're going to literally use the shadow graph and compare one ring to the other so we can actually see the wear um measuring rings you thicknesses and um you know your ring end gaps and stuff like that but i literally want to use the shadow graph and literally see the difference between one and the other like how much has worn away size differences and stuff like that but there you go you know that's it's it's that simple removing rings and it, it is that simple and i see so many videos on youtubes of guys with pliers screwdrivers god knows what 
You know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong, when you get to these big fucking diesels and stuff, you know, these rings are like bloody hula hoops, and, you know, there are tools for them, but we're talking bikes here, even your cars. Um, you know what I mean? You can do the same thing for these rings. You know, these are out of that an American V8, you know, these big... Oh, fucking Nora. Big Amer American V8, boys. You see how big these rings are? Fucking hell. You can easily put a ring clean in them, you know what I mean? These things are fucking huge. But again, they have a bit of bend to them, a bit of springiness to them, and you can basically just do the same thing. Just more likely to cut you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not rocket science. So every time, if you ever see someone with a screwdriver, say, what the fuck are you doing? Right then. It's time to move on. Um, we're going to start taking off the accessory covers. Basically, we'll start with the um, end of the crank nose because we're going to talk about witness marks. And then, because I'm, well, I know there'll be a witness mark under there. <laughs> there always is. And then we're going to start on the clutch. Um, and in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on with the tear down. And then in the meantime, we will have videos just for the variety where we go, you know, we'll be going back and I'll go, oh, the next video is measuring the wrist pins and the pistons. Uh, the next one will be measuring the valve, you know, valves and um, valve stem diameters and so on and so on. And we'll just go along and just, I'll just chuck videos in here, there and everywhere when I get round to them. Um, I'm going to try and split up the measuring um, videos because although they are very important, you know, if you watch because there's, a, there's probably going to be about fucking 10 videos one after the other about measuring i don't want to do that i'm going to kind of mix them up so there'll be some measuring going on in one video then we'll be taking stuff apart more and more and more you know and then we'll get to assess the whole thing i'll see if we find any juicy bits and um you know just basically go from there hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit 